watching AYV Television. Good evening. This is AYV's Primetime News. I am Fibian Swil Randall. Let's start with the headlines. AYV and AfriCell construct $5 million entertainment complex. Like I said, it's a multi-purpose entertainment complex. Thanks to AfriCell, thanks to AYV for such a huge, huge, huge collaboration. Medical officials meet with aggrieved health workers in Kono. Since we don't start for work in the center from April up to now, up to date, we will not be don't get any allowance it. That the Sarge Foundation supports over 200 children in Kobe community. And I look at the areas they were in the swamp, the areas they were impoverished, the areas they were, they're not get opportunity, they're less privileged. Now for the full names. Africa Young Voices Media Empire, in collaboration with AfroCell Mobile Company, have embarked on the construction of an entertainment complex worth five million United States dollars. According to the CEO of Africa Young Voices Media Empire, Anthony Navo Jr., Sierra Leone for the first time will be proud of a multi-purpose entertainment complex worth millions of dollars. Here's an update of the work so far. It's a solution to studios, to TV, to proper studios, to live music to concerts, to movies, you name it. Like I said, it's a multi-purpose entertainment complex. Thanks to AfriCell, thanks to AYV for such a huge, huge, huge collaboration. The project for me, it's a very fast project. I'm here today with the CEO of AfriCell. We are constructing a $5 million entertainment for Sahelians. And, um, it's, it's, it's an Aculean task and the timing, the time frame, it's not easy, but we have to ensure that we're here every week to, to go through the project. And so far, they've done well and um, the project is moving on and we're we are, we are right on schedule, I believe. We're not going to make the money tomorrow. We're not going to even make the money next year, but we are planting that seed for our generation yet on board. It's, 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 it's an investment for generation. This is happening in Sierra Leone for the first time. In fact, it is happening in the Mano River Union for the first time to have a, an entertainment complex worth millions of dollars, you know, for our people, for our young people. This All right, so in the past couple of years, we've done a couple of TV shows, a couple of reality shows. We did Housemates uh, one, two years ago, we did be a star last year and now we're doing the second season of housemates now the first season of housemates was us trying to find our grants trying to learn because it was the first time it's done at that level we had to learn everything from scratch going through that process we learned what we want and what we don't want out of the show and how to implement it so that's where we said we did a blueprint of how our second reality going, a TV show going to be, what complex do we need to get, what facilities do we need, and that's why we built this facility to be able to do that reality show, to be able to do, to be, uh, be a star second season, and anything else that we've been doing. We've done a lot of gaming shows in the past, Yusabi Guess and others, so that the, all of this will be able to give us the opportunity to do such entertainment shows for the public so that they will be able to be entertained educated have a platform also to expand and remember every housemate that came out of the house has done something with their life it became a platform for them be a star it became a platform for them so i am very sure that the housemates second season will also be a platform for many of the housemates so that they can change their lives improve their lives we give them the opportunity and it's up to them to make the best out of it the Minister of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Al-Fatijan Wuri, has said the Ministry of Health has improved in the surveillance and contact tracing sector and the clinical and laboratory sector. 
The health minister also commended the citizens for complying with the wearing of face masks and maintaining social distancing to prevent COVID-19. He made this statement while receiving medical supplies from the Sierra Leone Labour Congress to support the fight against COVID-19. Sheku Mohamed Zila has more. Addressing the delegation from the Labour Congress, the Minister of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Alpha Tijan Wugi, said he is pleased that the Congress is pushing and supporting the workforce of the ministry. He added that this support will help in the fight against COVID-19 in the country. The level of compliance in Sierra Leone is real. Most countries are still struggling with that. And the Labour con Congress should be one mode of passing on the information to recognize that Sierra Leone has done well with regards to public health. <laughs> We have recoveries of 75, 76%. You, you, you do not put as much weighting in your medical team. We have been able to ensure 75% of the 2,000 people huh, are safe, sound, and out. We still have 69 deaths only in Saudi If you take that, say, 70 deaths in seven, in 7 million people, you're talking about 10 deaths per million. Compare that to the U.S. Mohamed Sali Bangura, acting president, Sierra Labour Congress, called on their members to adhere to all precautionary measures prescribed by the health ministry to win the fight against COVID-19. We are giving out to government through the Ministry of Health and Sanitation the following items. We are giving 300 Veronica buckets, 320 hand sanitizers, 200 liquid soap, 260 tissue boxes, 5,000 pairs of medical hand gloves. Sheku Mohamed Sile, AYV News, Freetown. Now, Action Against Hunger has provided water facility for the Wilberforce Community Health Center. According to the WASH engineer for Action Against Hunger, engineer David Kagbo, this is to help solve the problem of water, which has been a major challenge for not only the health facility, but the community as a whole. Our health reporter, Swaliho Vandi, has more on the story. Health workers at the Wilberforce Community Health Center celebrating the arrival of water at their health facility. Water has been a major challenge for this health facility over the years. The rehabilitation of this borehole by Action Against Hunger with funds from SIDA has brought happiness to this community. Engineer David Kabo is the WASH engineer for Action Against Hunger. For Wilberforce uh, CHC, it's a larger it's a larger uh, community and the catchment uh, population is very huge. A lot of people within this environment come to access this facility. So without water, it has been very difficult for the management of this facility to function well. So an action against hunger received a funding from SIDA and AFD uh, during this COVID emergency to strengthen uh, health system services within the Western A and Urban and Rural District of Sierra Leone. Appreciating this gesture, health workers at this facility expressed thanks and appreciation to action against hunger. Really happy. The ball goal for what can be the work within two, three years before where you don't put up up to this time now, we're we'll not going to get water. So that will really give you a hell of problem. If you see infection, cross infection when they come inside the labor room, not of another thing on that because of a shortage of water and water it's very, very paramount. If you then go to VHO club, I say now, number one domain that one they wait for day. So really happy. I don't know how to express my thanks and appreciation. They all the work and mentality, they use enough water. So water, I think, say is the best thing so far with all the health facility. So I don't give you this gift to thank God anyway. Action Against Hunger also donated hand washing materials to the Freetown City Council for the wider use of the city. Mayor Yvonne Aki Soya thanked Action Against Hunger for the kind gesture and promised the good utilization of the materials. Swale Hovandi, AYV News, Freetown. 
Residents of Bo and Bonth districts have prioritized road, health, agriculture and energy as part of their development needs. They made these declarations during the popularization of the mid-term national development plan by the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development. Ronald Jomorovia was part of the consultation process. He now reports. On behalf of the district, I want to use this opportunity to hand them over, hand over this right as possible. And then, as the custodians of the land, develop it into one man business. Those in all the world are part of it. We know we will promote development of non better roads. Residents of Bo and Bondi Streets presenting their development priorities to the Minister of Planning and Economic Development. The Midterm National Development Plan, launched by President Bill in 2019, is founded on a strong political commitment to deliver development results that will improve the welfare of Sierleanians. The popularization taught by the Ministry is to give locals the opportunity to identify areas of development. Three priority areas, one we took road. Roads are very, very important. And the second priority area is uh, agriculture, because if we are embarking on agriculture, road is very, very important. Why? When the commodities are from the, the agricultural side, these ones can now easily be taken to the market side, to any other place where people can easily access. And the, we know the third priority we took is uh, energy. And the road is a critical situation here in Bodhi Street. The roads are very desirable to all the children's communities. We want development in Bodhi Street. We can't get that development if we don't have proper roads we can use. So that is why I think development of mostly travels on road. If there is no road network, then even people with money will not even access their communities. The Midterm National Development Plan is a development journey that is expected to run on to 2023. The consultation process is to confirm development priorities with the aim of including such priorities in the 2021 budget. Those priorities transformed into public investment programs. And those programs will be reflected now in the next budget for 2021, going forward to 2022, 2023, and so forth. So that's how it's going, it's going to happen. In addition to what we see from the from the sectors generally, but this is going to inform the budget process. So it's going to be a bottom-up process, and it's going to be a more realistic budget this time. Presenting the Midterm National Development Plan to the people of Bo and Bonds. The minister further appealed to residents to own their development plans. Road, health, agriculture and energy are the major priorities chosen by the two districts. Ronald Jumo via AYV News. Daddy Sarge Foundation has supported over 200 children in Crew Bay community with school materials, which include backpacks, books, pens and pencils, among others. The support, according to the CEO and founder Joseph Cole, is to inspire deprived children to focus on education. Let's join Joseph Johnson with more on that. The support, according to Joseph Cole, commonly known as Daddy Sarge, is not only to complement government's free education life, but it is a way of inspiring children from the slum communities to be focused. As I deserve to support education because my own goal is to support the kingdom. Okay? The kingdom no need my kids' money. The kingdom no need for ten job. The kingdom need for land book. That's it. And I they look at the areas that we are the swamp, the areas that we impoverished, the areas that we they don't get opportunity, they're less privileged. And I they look, not to just use our common at the but they look way beyond. Say go long year. I've done that before. Long years. So those are the areas I'm looking at. So free education, good. Because for the picking them, not to the map. So I don't really get down according to the GDP. But if I have to add to that, because we already add all the we don't well salon. Let them pick in there, let them educate and get sense. You understand? Not to because we so far maybe we will not be get education enough make wall fall inside the track, inside the cracks. So whatever we will do, I believe so if we change the mindset of the Peking that we like the government say free education, you don't get that opportunity today. We were left behind and we're not a politician. We self can add. I believe say salon in future will be better. Even if we don't die go safe, we go gladly for seeing that country they will come out. So, this now something where they continue. Okay? Now our school they can open in September. And so school will open. So this is back to school. If I do something Christmas, I know I can't give picking and books Christmas. I'll give food. Okay. Some of the beneficiaries expressed appreciation over the move, stating that it came at a time 
when school is about to reopen. I feel fine because I don't have the trigger for you. It's how they do business, business is not true. So right now, if you don't see us, we're glad you. We the pray the way we send and we go get more, we do more power to pass than you. Well, I'm glad you, because I'm not expecting you. I'm coming on Friday. And school can open now. We send me the plan for my bank, but I don't get it. So that one can give me a terrible thank you for that. The foundation believes such a support is part of their plans to reach out to deprived communities and people while pledging the continuation of the same support in other areas in the country. Joseph Johnson, AYV News, Freetown. Now, over 35 persons living with disabilities at Ekoa Street in Freetown have benefited from a direct cash transfer from Zion's charity organization. The cash transfer, according to the organization's finance officer, Hassan Koma, is to help cushion the effect of COVID-19 on persons living with disabilities. Tamba Stephen Komba has more. Since the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in Sierra Leone, government through the Ministry of Sports banned all activities of sports as a way of preventing athletes from contacting the virus. But with no activities going on, specifically for athletes to make ends meet, some of these athletes from the Sierra Leone Correctional Service expressed how delighted they are for receiving the support. We've been waiting for this for a very long time since this pandemic outbreak. We've been feeling as if as we've been forgotten, but unfortunately for us, we are, we are called last week to attend this particular meeting, not knowing something like this. So when we came here, we realized that there is something, there is a package for the players and the technical team. We are so happy and very grateful to the management. Very happy to receive the money because it can help us to our own issue. Buying some of the things we need to, as far as they disturbing us for now, the tango, the correction of service scholars. We apologize for that insert. Now, the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, NASIT, has concluded a three-week sensitization exercise for ARSLAF. The program is geared towards working with the Army to address the long-existing problem of mismatch of information submitted to the Trust by many military personnel, leading to delay of claims after retirement. The closing ceremony was held at the 15 Infantry Battalion at Lungi, where Salifu Chenokamar attended and now reports. The right to retirement pension, as described in Part 7 of the NASIT Act, is to be claimed by all subscribers of the scheme, says the Director General of NASIT, Mohamed Fouad Dabo. He continued to say that the NASIT scheme mandates the trust to pay benefits when contingencies occur but the claim must be given to the right person with correct amount and on time. Now we realize um, the deep-seated problems that we are having with the military with regards to their names, date of birth of themselves, uh, job history, dependents' name, date of birth of their dependents, etc., etc. So I'm so pleased with this exercise and it has been very successful. The, the turnout of the military is one and particularly the leadership of the army. In fact, the military has given us the, the impetus for us to move forward. It's, a, it's an exercise that we have started with the military. So we'll be having the police after the military, and I believe that uh, with the examples that we have seen and the history of our challenges with, when we get to the police, of course, we'll have correction of those ones. The need for the social security sensitization exercise came up in June this year as a result of the morale reports from various regiments of the RSLAF. Chief of Defense Staff for RSLAF, Lieutenant General Sule Sise said, challenges faced by military personnel with the NASIT scheme kept resurfacing in the morale reports over the years, noting that desensitization for RSLAF recruits is one of the key action points agreed upon to resolve the problems. We have actually not been updating you know, our NASIT status, you know, that is why they are here today, and I believe at the end of this sensitization, you will be able to issue out, you know, NASIT forms, you know, so that soldiers can be able to update their NASIT. Once that is done, I believe the problem will minimize. I will ensure that they fill the forms, the update forms, 
you fill the update forms and ensure that because what was highlighted, you fill the, most times you fill the, the update forms and fail to return them. I will ensure that once they fill those update forms, they will turn them to nothing. The ceremony was climaxed with a symbolic handing over of face masks as a token from NASIT to support compliance of COVID-19 measures at the 15th Infantry Battalion. Salifujerno Kamara, AYV News in Lunge. The Campaign for Human Rights and Development Initiative, together with WANEP, has embarked on public advocacy and community sensitization to promote peace. Tombo is one of the communities targeted. Lucian Kulanda has more from that end. Recently, the rate of riotous acts is alarming. Youth involving in destructive actions that most time leads to loss of lives and properties. During this engagement, the CEO of Campaign for Human Rights and Development Initiative, Abdul Fatoma, said their message to the communities is to love oneself. And our key message is that love yourself than politics. You know, when you love yourself, you will love your neighbor. And when you love your neighbor, definitely we will have peace in our different community, you know, through the rightful channel. And with that, we'll be seeking for redress, seeking for justice. And with that, most, many people will come to this community and contribute towards the social and economic development of this community. But with violence, we'll not be able to have that. And that's the reason why we appeal to young people. Why. Speaking to AYV, the councillor for Ward 375 in Tombo, Molai Kooma, said the sensitization is welcoming and timely. Um, everybody, they view young points, everybody, they talk in grievances. We say, pull them day, they will settle them at least for them to maintain peace in the community. So, but we're glad he, at least the whole government will set up them committees there for can down to the people, them, who at least let them see how best we will sort out some of them problems there and talk to the people. Them. The youth leader of the Tombo community, Mohamed Ba expressed issues that affect the youth. And we see how the police and the operate with them. You know, there are young people then they wait, they let they then they not get to also because in one day they know more. And because waiting and don't go to you know, you have to meet up with some police then police can hold in bike, maybe for just a crime we never even deserve to make even a na 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 sell. You know, that police will get money, they charge that, that young person to go to court. If you know that somebody will go to land, they will go to the room. This session brought together stakeholders in the Tumbo community as all hope that the information will go around. Lucian Kulanda. The Ministry of Technical and Higher Education has concluded a three day consultative meeting with polytechnics and teachers training colleges in the country to discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the instructions in dispensing learning management systems and how to digitalize them for educational advancement. George Philip Jambawai reports from Bull City where the event took place. For three days, this small building at Jala University Bull Campus housed administrators and technical staff of polytechnics and teachers training institutions in the country to transform education through technical advancement, through technological advancement which is still very slow in the country. But the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education engaged these people to examine their operations and get their input on how to digitalize their unsophisticated learning systems. We want to hear from them how they actually do what they're doing now so that we can see how we can move from that point and actually get um, things digitized so that um, it will aid their distance learning, it will um, aid them the way they are doing things right now, it will bring about uh, efficiency and more productivity in their day-to-day -day operations. So we are here with very big ears listening. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Jala University Bull Campus, Mohamed Said Fufana said, e-learning is very important for modern education but can only be achieved if administrators and lecturers are okay with the tools. For most of us, this is our first experience. But please, let's make sure that uh, this training is taken seriously. And for us to actually get something from this training, we need to consider two key components. Self-motivation, we have to be self-motivated. And discipline. According to John S. Goba, the head of ICT Eastern Polytechnic, the system will help ease their operations. It is a centralized system. It's going to track each and every operation electronically for the 
administration. So it's, it's an easy operation. He said ICT policies are key for digitalization, which some institutions, according to him, do not have. That most of the institutions don't have ICT policy. And like if you are saying go digital, there are certain guiding rules that have to bind the operation of those institutions in regard to that of the software that they are deploying. Church Philip Jambawai, AYV, Bo. This is Primetime News. We'll be back with more news after this break. We have extended the deadline for applications. House Smith Serion 2020 forms will now be available till the 31st of August. Ross now to any Afrocell or AYV offices nationwide and secure your farms for a chance to win a whopping 250 million leons plus a full round trip to Dubai or go to www.afrocell.sl or www.nyvnews.com to apply. Forms cost 150,000 leons and payment must be done through AfriMoney on 088 Remember, successful contestants will be screened and tested for COVID-19. Keep the house safe and clean. House Smith Sierra Leone Season 2, brought to you by AfriSelm and AYV. Welcome back. You're still watching and listening to Primetime News on AYV Television on Channel 33 and on Radio FM 101.6. I am Fabian Swill Randall. Now, the parliamentary eight-man committee on the McKinney riot has concluded a three-day hearing with people believed to be connected with the recent riot in McKinney. Augusta F.L. Turi has been following up. The committee was set up earlier this month. Following a peaceful protest by opposition MPs calling for parliamentary intervention to look into the ugly incident that occurred in McKinney between the 17th and 18th July this year that left six people dead. Honorable PC Sai Yongai Biwa II speaks to AYV during the hearings at the Human Rights Commission's office in McKinney. We are here, first of all, to investigate into the entire activities that happen here, but specifically to look into the actions of the central government and local government, that is to identify and investigate the inaction and the actions of central government and local government, as well as also to investigate into the activities of the youths of those two days, whether in fact the violence, the activities were justified. Additionally, we are also to investigate the activities of the forces, whether their actions and the forces they applied were justified and proportionate. Then last day, we are also to identify the lessons learned and to make recommendations to Parliament for onward you know, advice. The committee cut across all the political representation in Parliament. In terms of political parties, we have four parties in Parliament and the four parties are represented here. We have APC, two representation, SLPP, we have two representatives, then we have an independent candidate who, is, who happens to be a female, is amongst us, and uh, we have NGC represented as well. So C4C is there, but they are not present in this session. So you can see from there that uh, we are representing the people, and uh, their interest is what we are seeking here. For AYV Prime Time News in McKinney, I am Augusta Etel Tue reporting. Water Sanitation and Hygiene Network have ended a workshop on conflict-sensitive response to COVID-19. This is to encourage security sectors to exhibit professionalism in handling cases relating to COVID-19. 
Jonathan Pangu reports. Amid COVID-19, several conflicts have ensued between security personnel and other citizens responding to the guideline principles set by WHO and government of Sierra Leone. Many assumptions have been made to survey the problem of making sure that citizens follow the guideline principles with no conflict between them and security personnel. The Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Network of Sierra Leone Washnet has partnered with CODE through the support from EU civil society platform on peace and security to develop key advocacy components. Security personnel and relevant stakeholder groups have been engaged during this workshop to identify delivering conflict sensitivity professional service as they enforce compliance in the COVID-19 response. Musa Ansumana Soko is the Chief Executive Officer of Washnet. This is the more reason we feel there is this need to continue engaging. We cannot stop engaging until we reach the last mile. And what next beyond this, basically, is to continue raising awareness of the key issues, particularly those prescribed in the national guidelines, as well as the chief bylaws that have been developed over the period, to be able to ensure that even as security sector personnel go out to be able to um, enforce the violence or the measures. But people themselves must be able to get aware of the key provisions in the violence because there's no way you can enforce compliance for people so the fact are not aware of the provisions within it and the penalties are put with it. So um, going beyond this, we feel there is um, this urgent need to continue cascading the effect of the end. Compliance is key in the goal sets to be achieved. Major Aiko Oma is the coordinator of operations and sanitation room, Dikovac, Bombali. This training they help big one because people um, really they way not be know the, the essence of this thing and people not be know not be get clear idea as to how them for come to one for fight corona fight. But since we don't come on this training, we don't see people and don't begin comply. People don't come with some questions where they don't clarify the questions. And don't now away and say this and this now in for do for come to run and fight for succeed during the corona hour. Jonathan Pangu, AYV News, Makini. After weeks of proposed protests and sit-down strikes by frontline workers in the COVID-19 response in Kono, stakeholders within the medical sector across the district have convened an emergency meeting of aggrieved and unpaid staff. These staff include those working with the COVID-19 Operations Center, Community Treatment Center, Isolation Center, and the Community Care Unit. Amadou Kamara was there, and he now reports. The protests, sit-down strikes, and downing of tools by these workers within the emergency response here in Kono has always fell on deaf ears. The in charge for the treatment center, we get in charge, now the isolation, and the in charge also the CCC. Then they for the complete four uh, three months first. The first contract and the first three months, nothing will happen. Since March this year, when workers serving various capacities in the emergency response were recruited by the Ministry of Health with an assurance to be paid weekly allowances, nothing they say has ever reached them. Since we don't start for work in the centre from April up to now, up to date, we not be don't get any allowance. It. Government we don't talk say the one that wouldn't the work in the centers, then they receive one million euros per week. And up to now, we're not able to get nothing yet. We say 60,000 for get them, you know, the week's allowance to get them. The week's allowance, in fact, nothing we're not able to get. They say we be bad number there, we don't try to electrify all. More than, more than five times or so, we the coordinator. And we just say, we say, no question, no question. We say, this thing don't bother we feeding, not to better food in the cows. Even for feeding and money, for making breakfast, and not better for me. Even some boys in the I tell them, say they put money just for letting will go before. This meeting convened by these stakeholders is meant to have a grouped staff on a round table and discuss a way forward. Sir Samuel Sam heads the district's COVID 19 response operation, Sarah in Kono. If they send the money to me, Sir Samuel Sam, for me to pay them. And under any reason for being out of the money, for either money or for put up. On the own personal program. I'm not very easy for do that. I can tell you, I get a name for protect, I get the integrity for protect. Gumblings, the grievances, and outcries backed with another threat to lay down tools if prompt actions not taken is imminent. AYV TV, Amadou Kama, Kwedu, Corner District.
And finally, in sports, some players and officials of the Sierra Leone Correctional Service Sports Club have commended the executive for assisting them with COVID-19 preventive materials and some relief items from the management. The official presentation was done at the Sierra Leone Correctional Center headquarters in Freetown. Our sports reporter, Ransford McLean, has more. Since the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in Sierra Leone, government through the Ministry of Sports banned all activities of sports as a way of preventing athletes from contacting the virus. But with no activities going on specifically for athletes to make ends meet, some of these athletes from the Sierra Leone Correctional Service expressed how delighted they are for receiving the support. We've been waiting for this for a very long time since this pandemic outbreak. We've been feeling as if as we've been forgotten, but unfortunately for us, we are, we are called last week to attend this particular meeting, not knowing something like this. So when we came here, we realized that there is something, there is a package for the players and technical team. We are so happy and very grateful to the management. Very happy to receive the money because it can help us to our own, own issue buying some of the things we need to as far as they disturbing us for now. We thank God the correctional service call us at least to offer us some amount of money so we can sustain ourselves at all. Ishmael Kelfala, National Public Relations Officer of the Sierra Leone Correctional Services, the support to players and officials was to recognize them on their diligently service in sports before the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in Sierra Leone. Because of the COVID, no, there is no sport activity for now in the country. And uh, we, we, we thought of it that indeed we as an institution, we can in our own little way to help them because of this particular pandemic in our country. Players are deciding, so we thought it fit that um, let's hold this particular program. We've sent uh, some of the correspondents to the provinces. You know, we have quite uh, regional offices over there so that we can all assemble the athletes, so we do have some playing at the provinces, but for now, and majority are, they are civilians. These are not officers. So you see, those that you see here today, receiving this donation, majority are civilians. Players are hoping that government will soon lift the ban of sports activities in order to resume their livelihood activities. Runs for McLean, AYV Sports, Freetown. And that's all for Primetime News tonight. Send us feedback via email to info at ayvnews.com. You can also connect with us online at www.ayvnews.com or follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at AYV Sierra Leone. I am Phoebean Swil Randall. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a good night. Stay safe. watching AYV television